ready for you. Okay, my name is Tom Dooley. I work for the Nature Conservancy in South Carolina. Um, I'm here serving as Deputy IC, um, or Deputy Incident Commander for the Ashland Treks. Uh, have you been out in the treks here before? Uh, yes, I was out last year um, running a, a module. My name is Tom Dooley. I am the Director of Forest Conservation for um, the Nature Conservancy in South Carolina. I'm serving as a Deputy IC for the, or Deputy Incident Commander for the Ashland Prescribed Fire Training Exchange. And you guys have, what's the differences you find from South Carolina to here? Uh, well, first of all, uh, particularly mo places that I mostly work in are relatively flat. Um, uh, so being um, in, uh, in terrain is a little bit different. Um, the, the fuels are surprisingly similar um, and uh, in some ways. Uh, but adding that kind of third dimension of topography is a little bit different. Yeah, what do you think of the whole Trex program? Or actually, can you just explain, maybe just give me a couple sure. sense of what it is and then... Yeah, uh, well, Trex is, is uh, the Prescribed Fire Training Exchange, or Trex, is designed to really uh, get people through certain bottlenecks in their training and experience. Um, we pull people together from all across the country and in some instances across the, the globe and uh, we put them through a two-week intensive um, training operation uh, where we can really drill down into um, skills and proficiencies related to wildland fire particularly prescribed fire um, it, so it addresses that training need um, and that's a big big piece of it um, the other two pieces of it the first one is we're actually doing work on the landscape, so we're accomplishing something of need um, when it comes to conserving forests and to conserving water resources, particularly here in the Ashland watershed. And then finally, the third thing is to promote the use of fire as, a, as an important tool for forest health, um, for public safety, um, and uh, um, firefighter safety as well. And so what are we doing out here today? Well, today we're, um, uh, we've had a, uh, couple of days of rainfall so things are a little bit wet um, we've had a pretty good weather change and um, we have these uh, areas that have been hand cut with uh, uh, by people and piled into small small piles and they need to be burned um, so um, what we're doing is essentially effectively reducing the fuel load out here um, and this is a perfect weather situation perfect fuel situation in order to come out here and burn these piles um, we can burn the piles and the fire's not going to spread and uh, it's going to stay where we need it to stay so it's very safe. Well, I, I know for me this is probably some of the most professionally rewarding time that I spend in my, in my year at a, at a uh, training exchange and um, uh, I get a lot out of it. I learn a lot um, and uh, the camaraderie the, uh, um, that's, that's established and the relationships that are um, formed here um, last for careers. Um, and it's very important and you know when you put people together from different uh, experience and different walks of life and you put them in a situation where everything is a, is an outdoor classroom um, it's uh, it becomes kind of this really formative formative thing where people connect um, they connect with the landscape they connect with each other and they take that back to their home units and and uh, hopefully advertise it and do you, do you tend to learn some stuff as well? Oh yeah, I think, uh, you know, in teaching others, we teach ourselves. And um, uh, it's, you know, I learn something every day, whether it's about managing the overall operation, and this is a big piece of why I'm here, is so that I can take some of the lessons that I learn here and help us uh, put on a prescribed fire training exchange in the Southern Blue Ridge Mountains of South Carolina. That, tell me your name and yeah. spell it for me real Sure, quick. I'll spell it. Uh, Tom Dooley. Uh, D-O-O-L-E-Y. Uh, my name is Katie Sabre and I work for the Nature Conservancy in Oregon. Um, my day job outside of Trex is as a preserve manager for Saikan Marsh Preserve. But here in Ashland, my role at Trex is as the incident commander. So it's, it's my job to help lead the team that puts on the training as well as provide a good experience for all the participants that are gathered here from all over the country and beyond. Have you been to the Trex training thing here before? Last year, I came to Ashland Trex as a deputy IC um, and kind of got a glimpse into what the role of the incident commander might be like, and now I'm here as the incident commander. Can you tell me a little about the experience of 
trek from being a part of it and uh you know just like what the, the outcomes that you're hoping for and what, what you feel like you get out of it there's there's three kind of primary goals of of any given treks and that especially rings true here in ashland one of them being training so we bring folks two treks from from all over the country and as well as some other countries we've got mexico spain and canada represented here um, and with the, with the purpose of providing training for all of them on different levels of prescribed fire implementation. So some folks have literally never been on a prescribed burn and are learning from the basics on, and then other folks have been doing fire for 20, 30 years, but come here to learn a specific skill um, during the fire implementation. And um, the, the second kind of big outcome that we get from Trex is we're able to bolster the local capacity like here around the city of Ashland so we bring in 50 fire practitioners right who can then go out and and do increased numbers of prescribed burns um, therefore creating more resiliency around the community of Ashland and the third kind of big goal of treks that we have is is outreach so we we do different um, outreach um, like media outreach as well as we hosted a wilder than wild film festival a couple nights ago for the community to come and be able to understand the role of fire in these forests around Ashland as well as what fire practitioners are doing to be able to kind of increase the pace and, and scale of fire use right around their community. Things that's really neat um, about Trex is that it's it's place-based right so we bring folks in and before they come to Trex, they have to have at least basic fire training that they get from sitting and either watching online videos or watching PowerPoints. But what Trex allows us to do is actually get them out on the ground and be able to um, use a drip torch or be able to spray hose. And kind of the magical thing about Trex is you, everyone is here to learn something. So you have folks here who, who don't know anything about um, fire implementation but who maybe study fire ecology and so they want to learn like how do we actually implement fire how do we put fire back in the forest and then we'll have folks who have years and years of fire experience doing fire suppression all over the west but they want to come and learn more specifically about the the ecology and the science behind fire so we get those two types of people in the room and they then get to teach each other um, which is pretty magical. Everyone brings, some, brings something that they get to teach others and also are able to walk away with something that they learned. Um, which I, there's not a lot of other programs that model things in that kind of teacher and trainer to one another way, which is pretty neat. Any thoughts about like the scale of this kind of work happening and I don't know what, what the hopes are for the long term, what the impact you're, your we're making, if you will, or you're all making yeah well it's it's pretty well recognized that um, in order for us to to kind of get ahead of the curve with putting fire back into forests and, and other types of um, systems as well grasslands um, we're gonna have to do it faster and on a larger scale than we have been doing it and events like treks will allow us to build capacity to do that in other places right so we bring everyone here and we temporarily increase capacity in the Ashland watershed but then when all these people leave and go back to their home units with the things that they've learned here they can then be the advocate to be able to increase the, the kind of pace and skill on their home units hopefully kind of creating a ripple effect across all of the west and beyond which is pretty pretty neat. So would, would you say that this didn't used to be as much of a year-round job as it is now just because of all the yeah, I, I mean, that's been my, my experience. Um, I've been in, in fire for 12 years, and when I first got into it, it was like a five, six month thing. Um, and, and now I maybe have one or two months a year that I'm not doing fire in like the dead of winter. Um, yeah, it's whole handy, but sure, go ahead. Yeah, the Ashland Prescribed Fire Training Exchange is a, is a program of the Fire Learning Network and the Nature Conservancy which brings together our local partners, the city, the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest, and Lomakatsi, and then participants from around the globe to uh, learn to use fire to effectively build teams 
and uh, work on their qualifications so that they can safely conduct uh, prescribed burns, controlled fire use that uh, helps them return the beneficial role of fire in, in their landscapes, their home landscapes from wherever they're from. The, um, the prescribed fire training exchange lasts about two weeks. Uh, this is the fourth year that we've, we've conducted it. And um, each of the participants uh, provides us with information about the training that they've had in the past. And our training specialist and the leadership team uh, puts together a, um, a basically a curriculum of activities that each participant will, um, will practice. And if they get enough opportunity, they have um, uh, the chance at getting their their task book for a particular position uh, filled in and uh, eventually uh, signed off on by a qualified operator inside that task. So we have fire effects monitors learning how to do that role. Today we have a, a burn boss trainee learning to uh, conduct the overall operation. We have another trainee in the position of uh, the ignition boss. And, uh, and then other members who are learning to be basic firefighters, uh, learning how to use their hand tools, learning how to use a drip torch, and uh, learning more about the safe use of, uh, of fire. And why do it in this area? The Ashland Forest Resiliency and the Ashland Forest All Lands Restoration Project are really about setting the stage for returning the beneficial fire to the landscape. A landscape that has a long history of frequent fire, frequent mild fire. Research shows it was about every eight years in this area. It's gone a long time without that, a hundred or more years here. So um, the TREX program helps us bring resources to the Ashland Forest Resiliency Project to take care of the, um, the thinning and fuels reduction uh, material that's been piled up here today and uh, gets that material consumed so that we can come back at a later date and conduct a broadcast burn. All of this is setting the stage for that beneficial return of fire. It could be another prescribed burn in the future or it could be the next wildfire. But all of this work uh, helps reduce the risks associated with fire when it burns so that the fire will be less intense, have uh, lower severity effects on the stand that we care about and on the forest landscape. And it also reduces the risk to the community nearby and their, their watershed, their water source on which they're dependent. TREX, the Prescribed Fire Training Exchange, is, is a program that's been initiated in many sites, over a dozen sites around the country. Understood. So TREX is a, a national program of uh, the Fire Learning Network. And um, in each location, they're, they're picked to uh, help bring resources to the project area where the TREX is being run. But it's, it's also about uh, demonstrating an approach of bringing together and coordinating uh, resources from many different agencies to come together and learn to burn together. In bringing together multiple um, agencies from many different areas, we, uh, we help demonstrate how to do the coordination, and then we help to seed this approach, the kind of thoughtful, careful, tending with fire, that we call prescribed burning or controlled burning uh, across many more landscapes. It's an opportunity to gain a little more perspective on how people, fire professionals, address their issues and integrate a response, a controlled burning response that works in that context. And um, it helps spark ideas about how um, I might be able to uh, better run and conduct controlled burns. So there's always value to see how people are doing these controlled burns in, in other environments. That is an added benefit of bringing people to a prescribed fire training exchange. Well, you just said the first sentence, the beginning, you said every time I travel to another area with, and see or whatever. Oh yeah, sure. Because uh, I wasn't pressed, I hadn't, hadn't pressed record yet. 
Yeah, every, every time I travel to another area and see how people conduct their pre prescribed burns, it's a real learning opportunity. Um, the professionals in each region have learned to adapt and integrate many different facets of that landscape and it's always beneficial to see how they do that integration, what tools they bring to it, how they approach the whole process, whether it's uh, the right weather or how they're managing smoke, how they coordinate different teams, how they communicate and the tools that they use. Um, it's, it's really worthwhile getting out to see other prescribed burn teams. Awesome. What's going on out here today? We're burning piles to reduce fuels in the AFR project. Well, who are you with? Uh, this is the Trex, uh, Ashland Trex. Uh, this is module Charlie and the FEMO module. So there's some people out here that have never done this before. Correct. Kind of fun? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. But if you don't think it's gonna carry. So see you got that that end of it. Yeah. So come to this corner. And you don't necessarily have to drip fuel all the way around. Okay. But usually so you like this bottom corner, so like try and find the dry spot. And it should suck the heat from this one up to the other spot you lit. All right, my name is Jack Madison. I'm with the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, I'm out at the Trex Ashland uh, 2019, um, helping train some of the uh, newbies, uh, brand new people, first time introducing fire to the landscape. Uh, it's really exciting for me to be able to like have this opportunity to share my knowledge and years of burning with uh, brand new people, uh, learning how to appropriately apply fire to the landscape. Uh, it's we need more people to learn how to do this because the work is, is out there and it needs to be done. Um, so I'm really happy to be part of all this. <laughs> so you're just just mentioning you're just pile burning today and yeah, right right now today we are just pile burning. Uh, these have been piled uh, prehand, uh, covered, and they've been uh, curing, just waiting to be burned. Uh, yeah, so kind of this is kind of the first phase of of uh, burning, burning the landscape um, in a controlled way. We've taken all the heavies, uh, piled them all together in a control in a, in a smaller area where we can uh, have better control over the fire. Uh, when these die down and time goes on, we'll eventually come back and broad broadcast a controlled burn along the ground and take care of some of the smaller stuff on the ground that will uh, help help. Uh, Create, create a more resilient uh, forest to fire. Uh, I'm ready. All right. My name is Heather Heward. I work at the University of Idaho in the College of Natural Resources as an instructor of fire ecology and management. And I'm here on the Ashland Treks near Ashland, Oregon to learn about the prescribed fire application. Um, my name is Heather Heward. I work at the University of Idaho and I'm here on the Ashland Training Exchange as an engine boss trainee. So, yeah, what does the engine boss trainee do? An engine boss trainee is in a position where they are familiar with an engine and how the pumps work and what equipment is on the engine and how to use that engine if something were to need some water, let's say for a fire that was burning a little more actively than we wanted it to on a prescribed burn or if we had something that happened outside the unit that we were able to control it with an engine. Uh, engines are pretty important resources on prescribed fires to make sure that they stay contained in the prescribed burn unit. And so what do you think of this program? Have you been to it before first of all and what do you think of the whole idea? So I was involved in the, one of the first training exchanges in Texas in 2008. It was a real um, great experience for me to be a part of that beginning and to see how much it's, uh, it has grown since then. I've been involved in one other training exchange in um, Nebraska and this training exchange uh, is very organized. There's a lot of really great learning that's happening. We have a good structure for having people as train trainers and trainees so that everybody is in a position of learning. Either you're learning how to do something new or you're learning how to teach somebody how to do something new, which is really uh, beneficial for everybody. First time to the area? 
This is not my first time to the area. Uh, my first time to this area was in 2002. It was my first fire on the Biscuit Fire. So I don't remember a whole lot of that time. It was a lot of new things happening, but it was uh, one of the largest, if not the largest fire in uh, this area and probably the, the Northwest area as well. And um, I definitely found that this area is beautiful. Um, as I am approaching this area now for the first time with my um, ecology background, my fire background, it's really fascinating to see what this forest Can looks like. Uh, so being here right now is amazing to see uh, what a forest like this looks like in various conditions of um, fire return interval. So this area has not seen fire for a long time and you can see a lot of material that's accumulated on the ground that's making um, the risk for wildfire relatively high. So by applying these treatments, going in and taking the material from the ground and hand piling it, burning that material in these hand piles in a time that's very wet, and then coming in later with prescribed fire in what we call a broadcast burn that moves fire um, all along the surface of the floor and removes the material off of the ground just like you would um, do to sweep your floor at home. It removes that fuel and then when a, a, a fire does occur here, a wildfire, that burns with much less intensity and is much easier to control during, with our firefighting resources during times of the year when it's hotter and drier and fires are generally harder to control. How about just a quick thing about the value of a program like this, getting everyone together? Uh, the value of a program like this is, uh, has many different facets. Uh, certainly there's operational skills that you gain when you're in a program like this. So today we have four or five people that have never used prescribed fire before and are learning about what that skill set looks like. Um, and there are various positions operationally in the training exchange that people are able to get experience with. Those are the, um, the obvious outside um, activities that a training exchange provides. Um, but I would say that's the tip of the iceberg of what um, a training exchange actually um, provides. In the, other, the other benefits that come from that are the networking amongst individuals and with the leadership of the training exchange, um, getting new ideas, new perspectives, so that you can take those new ideas and perspectives home to your local areas and that we can all progress in our ability to be practitioners of, of land management. Another um, important aspect of these training exchanges is diversity and inclusion. And we have a really broad array of backgrounds, both backgrounds from experience, um, race, gender, um, economic, any, any spectrum <clears throat> that you could imagine we have that represented very well at these training exchanges. And it just gives the people here more practice working outside of the bubbles of people that look like them and feel like them. And it helps them get more comfortable in um, being open to working with all facets of people. And then as we, again, take that, that um, learning home to our, our local areas, we're able to work effectively with all levels of people and at all levels of understanding and get everybody on the same page that fire is a really important tool for our landscapes. And we have a lot of work to do, but we can do it together.